This may come as a shock to none of you, but I wasn't eagerly anticipating Miss Marvel to hit Disney Plus because I'm sexist and racist. Now, in all reality, it's because I'm feeling a little burnt out in Marvel properties in general. But since Miss Marvel is obviously geared towards younger audiences, much more family based, I thought I'll watch this with mine and we'll see how it does. This show is the definition of content to me. It's it's there. It's watchable, it's not doing anything amazing, but it's also not doing anything insulting. Our superhero this time is a high schooler named Kamala Khan, and she's a massive fan of Captain Marvel, which makes her incredibly unique, because she's literally the only person who's a fan of Captain Marvel. She's got her posters, she's dedicated a costume to her, she has an entire YouTube channel that's nothing but how great Captain Marvel is. Brie Larson's a smoke show to be sure, but that character, we, we gotta do better with her. Hopefully the sequel does. That said, the show itself is pretty fun. It's got a good vibe to it, a nice energy. It feels like Spider-Man Homecoming on the small screen. It also kind of reminded me of Scott Pilgrim. And no, it's not near that level of amazing, not even close. But the way that it presents certain things, like text bubbles when someone's on their phone, or how it graffitis on the side of the wall and animates it, there's lots of playful stuff going on. The effects on the show definitely do feel downgraded. You have that TV show budget. And when she finally does start to use those powers, which are pretty wildly different from the character I'm familiar with from that stupid Marvel video game, Avengers. And I would imagine the comic book where she's more of a Reed Richards, Stretch Armstrong type thing. Here she has kind of quasi Captain Marvel powers, but it's isolated to, at least for now, her hands that can stretch. I imagine she can do other things, but it's all done through a power amulet she conveniently got from her grandmother's belongings. Th th this whole plot right now is, is kind of silly and childish. I'm hoping that that starts to take shape as the show progresses, because right now it's just a convenient, oh, I found this, and it happens to give me amazing superpowers. They'll, uh, they'll flesh it out. This is only the first episode. The family and I liked it. We'll watch more. We'll see where this roller coaster goes. The only big standout as far as kind of like stupid shit goes is there is a moment towards the end where she's at Avenger Con, which is the first and the big deal uh, for this character. She uses the ability accidentally, which knocks a giant Ant-Man head into a pool, which becomes a giant Indiana Jones style bowling ball. The physics on this thing are completely insane. It doesn't add up. I mean, I'm not a scientist by any stretch of the imagination, but the momentum that thing somehow conjured out of nowhere just didn't stack up. It didn't film correctly. So this thing's just going, blows through a wall, which snaps a cable, which launches Thor's hammer into the hot, cool girl of the school, and she goes flying against the wall. Looked like it killed her. Uh, I don't know if that was supposed to be played for laughs or what, but that thing freaking wrecked her. She dropped like a bag of dirt. Then the audience was a wide range of emotions between flabbergasted, shell-shocked, and just kind of loving it all around. Thought maybe it was part of the performance. So that was a very weird scene, how it was shot and filmed. But for the most part, I really do dig the, the style they're going with here. It's very youthful, very energetic. Definitely very much speaking to me as a, as a middle-aged guy. I'm, I'm, I'm really getting that feeling. Characters are all likable. I really enjoy Kamala's family. They seem fun and like they're going to get into some hijinks together. Kind of reminds me of Sam Witwicky's parents from those uh, critically acclaimed Transformers films. Hey, you know what? They're, they're dumb, but they get the job done. We had the weekend to kick things off. I don't think that song was appropriately used, I'm gonna be honest. When it was in the trailers, it worked a lot better. When they used it at the beginning of the show, it, it didn't fit the template, it didn't fit the mold. That song deserved better. They should have saved it for a bigger moment. Uh, maybe they'll bring it back, but that was really the only thing that kind of irked me about the episode. Otherwise, as far as Disney Plus shows go, this is one of the better ones I've seen. Like I said, family's ready for more. I'd like to hear from you though. Did this do anything for you? Are you like me where you, you watched it, it's content and that's it? We, I don't need to see any more. Like I'm not gonna lose any sleep if this show's instantly canceled. So I guess maybe that says that it's, it's not that special. But at the same time, you know, family always could use something to watch and this, this seems to do the job. All right, let me know. Like the video if you had a good time. Think about subscribing as I post tons of movie and TV show related content each week. Hit that notification bell so these pop up in your feed and hopefully I'll see you stick around. Take care. I do like how they tried to kind of cover up the fact that Captain Marvel is just never around when it's convenient. There's kind of a throwaway line where Kamala says, 
Yeah, I mean, she has other things to do, so she couldn't stick around to help fight Thanos the whole time. What could have possibly been more important than half of the galaxy getting wiped out? What was she doing? Uh, she's changing batteries on some planet? Is she saving a cat from a tree uh, on planet Gorbazorb? Like, what the hell? Uh, don't make excuses for Captain Marvel. She, she's beyond the pale right now. She needs to make excuses, okay? I want to know what the hell she was doing with her time.